Today, we're going to take a look at three very different Android skins from three different Android manufacturers. Hey, what's going on? My name is Spencer. Thanks for stopping by the channel. If this is your first time stopping by, I try to look at all things tech through a real-world lens. That basically means looking at how these devices and services affect you day-to-day -day, instead of getting lost in the specs. So today, we're taking a look at three different UIs that are very popular on Android today from Xiaomi there on the left and on OnePlus there in the middle and on Huawei over here on my right. Now, I'm gonna to try to refer to these instead of MIUI, Oxygen OS, EMUI as the manufacturer name just to keep it simple. So Xiaomi on the left, OnePlus in the middle, Huawei over here on the right. Now, let's go ahead and dive into the status bar or notification shade of these three devices. So one slide down from the top, since these are all three screen recordings, this won't show up, but on Huawei over there on the right, it doesn't auto expand. So if you don't have any notifications, it pulls down all your toggles, which I think is really cool. I really like that feature from Huawei. The only knock against them in the toggles is you can't add auto brightness for some reason. So it is what it is. One plus there in the middle, you gotta pull down twice to get to the brightness slider, which is kind of annoying, more of a stock approach. I don't know why Google does that, but hey, they do. And over there on the left on Xiaomi, I think these toggles all look the cleanest. OnePlus looks pretty clean too though, but I like the way that Xiaomi looks personally. Again, you get access to this brightness slider right away, similar to Huawei, so nice touch there from uh, Xiaomi, just not a whole lot here, that's just what they look like. Xiaomi looks kind of like iOS, OnePlus looks like stock Android but with some theme on top of it, and over there on the right, Huawei looks a lot like Android KitKat, which I'm not a huge fan of. So Huawei here on the right, jumping into recent apps. Huawei has an issue with recent apps if you're using a third-party launcher, so I'm using the stock launcher on Huawei, just something to keep in mind. And on the uh, OnePlus and Xiaomi, I'm running Nova Launcher. So recent apps, the launcher shouldn't affect the recent apps in general, but you know, just a little disclaimer. So starting with Huawei and OnePlus kind of at the same time, they look a lot like Android Pie because they are both running Android Pie. I'm not a huge fan of this look. You don't get a lot of information on the app, at the, on the recent app screen. You just kind of see one app at a time. You know, it's it's fine if that's what you like. You do get a clear, all, a clear all recent apps button there at the bottom, which is cool. And then they both have a couple of different options to uh, split screen the app or lock the app if you don't want to clear the app when you hit clear all. But they look pretty similar overall, right? Now over here on Xiaomi on my left, this is a very different take on recent apps. You can see right now it's split screen, but once it loops back around to the recent app view, you can see a lot of content at once, kind of a staggered view left and right. I really like this implementation personally. You can slide the app away left or right. You can long press it to get to the app settings, split screen the app or lock the app. And if you look at the top of the screen, once it scrolls back up here on Xiaomi, it'll tell you how much RAM you're currently using. So again, very big personal preference thing. You also get the clear all button there at the bottom on Xiaomi, but I think Xiaomi's implementation is the best, especially with phone screens getting taller and taller and bigger and bigger. A lot of information you can see there making good use of that screen real estate. So jumping back home, something of note you can do on uh, Huawei over here on the right, but not the other two. You can customize navigation on all three, but there bottom right on Huawei, you do get the option to pull down the notification shade with a button in the nav bar. Super helpful, especially on a phone that's this size. Uh, and because it stays consistent throughout the entire system. So nice touch there from Huawei. But jumping in to show you the navigation settings on all three of these, nothing special. You can rearrange the nav buttons. You can enable gestures if you want. All three gestures are a little bit different. Just, you know, I'm not a huge fan of gestures, which is why I don't have them enabled. But, you know, navigation you can customize, which is nice for sure. Take notes, Google. So this next one is gonna be probably the longest clip in this entire video. It has to do with the sound menu, which might sound kind of weird, but bear with me here. There's some really cool differences between these three phones. So here on OnePlus in the middle, this is the one we're gonna take a look at first because we do have this hardware slider on the right side of the phone, which is, you know, pretty cool. You can change it from ring, vibrate, and silent, all from an iOS, I guess, inspired slider there on the right side, which is pretty cool. And only OnePlus is doing that right now. Now jumping into a side by side again, we're going to look at Xiaomi over here on the left first because that's the one that I like the best. You get a nice iOS-esque volume slider there for the music, 
if you tap the three dot menu there at the bottom, it pulls up this nice little context menu where you can adjust the sound for everything on your phone without leaving the current app. So if you saw the menu down there at the bottom, silent and do not disturb, you can click either of those and you can either just turn them on or you can turn them on for a set period of time. Say you're going to a meeting or you're going to bed, something like that. I think that's a really cool added feature there. And again, the biggest thing here with Xiaomi is that you don't have to leave the current app that you're in, which again is just huge to me context menu that pops up over everything. I dig that implementation for sure. So just moving over to the right to OnePlus, which is in the middle of your screen. When you actually push one of the volume buttons to pull up the context menu, it just lets you adjust the sound of the media. And then there at the top, you got a button to change the media output, which is pretty cool. If you got Bluetooth headphones set up or something like that, I really like that feature add. And then at the bottom, you get that little settings cog. You can push that and it jumps you into your settings menu to change all of the sound options. On Huawei, you have something similar, change the media volume. We have a little toggle there at the top, which cycles between silent, vibrate, and ring. If we cycle all the way back around to ring, we can change the notification volume there. And then we have a little settings cog there at the bottom, which jumps you into the full sound settings. So another difference between these three, which I just felt like I should mention is the settings menu. You get there by the same way on all three of these phones. I do it from the notification shade in the top right. And this is just what they look like. I mean, all three are slightly different. Just It just happens on Huawei and OnePlus. You can apply a dark theme throughout the system, which I've obviously done here. So I like the look of OnePlus the best, and then MIUI, and then Huawei, but you know, that's a very subjective personal preference thing. Again, over here on the right, you get the option to adjust the interface colors, darken the interface colors on OnePlus and Huawei, not over there on Xiaomi on the left. Next, another big thing is the calendar app on all three of these and the calendar widget. So again, we've got the default calendar widgets on all three of these on Xiaomi on the left, OnePlus in the middle, Huawei on the right. Huawei's does not play nice with third party launchers. I'm going to hope that has to do with the third party launcher bug that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And it's just, it's a dark theme because I applied that system wide. Nothing special, looks really clean. When you tap the widget or the app, it jumps into that 30 day month view, which I really like personally. OnePlus there in the middle, we've got the Google Calendar app by default, which I hate. I think it looks the most childish or cartoonish, but you know, this is a personal preference thing. If you disagree, I'm glad you like it. Just, I'm not a fan of it. It jumps you into that week event view, and instead of a uh, month long view, I'm just not a huge fan of it. And my favorite is over there once again on the left on Xiaomi. The only knock against it is, again, there's no dark theme and everything is in military time. So if you don't know military time, you're going to have a rough time possibly looking at stuff on the calendar once you're in the app. On the widget, it's 12-hour format, which is kind of weird, but hey, it is what it is. Kind of an iOS look, looks really clean. I really like the way it works and I don't have any complaints with how it functions other than that military time and dark theme thing. And here you can see the Huawei calendar app once again as I set it down. And the final thing in this video is the clock, another app that you use all the time if you're like me and that nobody ever talks about. So on OnePlus here in the middle, we've got the stock, uh, I guess, Google clock app, if you will. I don't like it. It looks like KitKat. It looks like it should go along with Huawei's toggles and go back to KitKat a few years ago. It just looks outdated to me. I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, Next is over there on the right with Huawei. Their app is fine, it looks pretty clean. I'm just not a fan of the look overall, just nothing special about it. It's just kinda, you know, eh. Something to note on Huawei, you can't swipe between those four tabs. You have to push the tab button there at the bottom of the screen. So, you know, just, just something to note. Might be an annoyance for you, or you might not care. Just something to note. Finally, over there on the left with Xiaomi. Their clock app is once again my favorite. It has a dark theme, unlike a lot of other stuff in the UI, which is kinda weird, but I think it looks really clean personally. And one thing that I love about it is there on the context menu, you see that delete after goes off toggle. So if you want to set an alarm and have it delete after the alarm goes off, instead of having, you know, 20 alarms there in your list, you can do that with Xiaomi. Huge feature in my opinion. I love that feature ad. I use it all the time. Super practical. And once again, I like it a lot. So Xiaomi gets my favorite calendar app and then EMUI and then OnePlus. So that's going to wrap up this video, guys. Let me know if there's something that you want to know about any of these skins that I failed to mention. If you have any questions about it, leave it in a comment down below. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you subscribe to see all my videos in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.